Sori and I were binging on uh, true crime. And one of the questions they always ask in true crime is who stands to benefit most from this death, right? So our country is consistently, by the way, shout out to the misery machine. Uh, you guys should check them out if you're into true crime. They do true crime with a heart, though, to be honest with you. I love Misery Machine. Uh, I actually did an interview with them about a couple true crime situations, unfortunately, that we were in the middle of. Okay. Um, so there's that. Um, so let's, let's check this out, guys. <clears throat> Look at this. A day ago, the EU signs a U.S. gas deal to curb reliance on Russia. Interesting. This is from the BBC, by the way. Uh, do what you will with it. The U.S. and the EU have announced a major deal on liquefied natural gas in an attempt to reduce Europe's reliance on Russian energy. The agreement will see the U.S. provide the EU with extra gas equivalent to around 10% of the gas it currently gets from Russia by the end of the year. The bloc has already said it will cut Russian gas use in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russia currently supplies about 40% of the EU's gas needs. The new deal will involve the U.S. and other countries supplying an extra 15 billion cubic meters of gas on top of last year's 22 billion cubic meters. Okay? So we were 22 billion cubic meters to 32 to 37. 37 billion cubic meters. The new total will represent around 24% of the gas currently imported from Russia. And we get a 10% cut of that. The eventual aim is for the U.S. and the international partners to, for, to provide about 50 billion cubic meters per year to the EU. Notice it says the U.S. and international partners. Who do you think is going to get the biggest cut of that? Cutting reliance on Russia will mean generating more renewable energy and improving energy efficiently, efficiency as well as increasing imports. Really? So if it was if it was just to the benefit of Europe, the Europeans, why did they wait till this she had for them to make that decision? How come they didn't do it before? So we look at this. We're gonna go. We went from uh, uh, twenty two billion. To 37 billion then we're looking at uh 50 billion and we're gonna get the lion's share of the cut because there are other international parties etc etc the deal was announced on friday during a three-day visit by u.s president joe biden to brussels mr biden and european commission president ursula von der leyen derlian discussed russia's invasion of ukraine and offered fresh support to kiev Putin is using Russia's energy resources to coerce and manipulate its neighbors, Mr. Biden told reporters in Brussels. He's used the profits to drive his war machine. He said the long-term benefits of the deal will outweigh the short-term pain that reducing Russian gas supplies would cause. There you go, Europe. There you go. I know that eliminating Russian gas will have costs for Europe. But it's not only the right thing to do from a moral standpoint, it's going to put us on a much stronger strategic footing. Yes, it will, because we will be stronger for it in the long run. We will benefit. The Russians will suffer. The Europeans will suffer. But the Americans will benefit in the long run. President von der Leyen said, we want as Europeans to diversify away from Russia towards suppliers that we trust, that are friends, and that are reliable. She pointed out that the target 50 billion cubic meters per year is replacing one third already of the Russian gas going to Europe today. So we are right on track now to diversify away from Russian gas. The EU gets 40% of its gas from Russia. If it's to wean itself off that dependency, it needs to get its energy elsewhere. The question is from where? Gas is already piped from Norway, but these pipelines are already operating at max capacity. The EU gets relatively little from the North Sea. New supplies will have to come further afield in the form of LNG, gas that's been chilled and liquefied. But there's already intense competition from, for LNG supplies from countries such as Algeria and Qatar, and that's been pushing up prices. The 50 billion cubic meters of gas a year from the U.S., more than double the current quantity, would certainly be welcome. Notice how 
at the beginning of the article, it was U.S. and certain partners. And now what we're hearing is, ah, oh, it's the U.S. Oh, it's the U.S. So we've got a plan to go from, currently it's at $22 billion, now it's at $37 billion, and we're shooting for $50 billion uh, cubic meters of gas a year from us. It still wouldn't fill the gap if the Russian supplies were moved. These are also question marks about how much gas the U.S. can supply, how quickly it can uh, increase its exports to the EU, and how much of those shipments will cost. The EU has been enjoying cheap gas for many years, but now it seems to have accepted that that era is coming to an end. Russia's war with Ukraine has helped push energy prices to record highs. Energy prices were already rising before the invasion as econ econ economies started to recover from the COVID crisis. Ukraine invasion uh, prompted the EU to pledge to cut Russian gas use by two-thirds this year by hiking imports from other countries and boosting renewable energy. I was talking to one of my guys, a supplier over, I, I work with him in Germany. He's like, look, man, we got to renegotiate this thing because you know what's happening to us, yada, yada, yada. I said, yeah, I know. If you guys would have approved Nord Stream 2, this actually would have helped us. He said, don't talk to me about it. He was very angry. Uh, so here we go. In 2020, we were 6.5% of their, their, uh, their gas and then we we're going to become as anywhere from 10 to 15 percent of their gas supplier does that uh oh yeah not to mention the billions in weapons sales to all the eu countries does that maybe give you some context for why we keep beating these war drums does that give you some context to why we were supporting the maidan uh, revolution, coup, however you want to call it. Does that give you context to why we were always floating around the idea that we would have them in NATO even though we knew we would never have them in NATO? Does that explain to you why we wouldn't go to the UN and, and, and put out a hard and fast declaration we will never have Ukraine in NATO? Why we were constantly poking the bear over and over again, sending them billions of dollars of weapons throughout all these different presidencies, trying to get this guy... To lose his mind, which he did, and invade Ukraine so that you could have an economic justification to make a complete pariah out of this country. And then we randomly end up benefiting. And now you've got all these European countries saying, holy shit, you need to expand NATO. We want, we want membership in NATO now. And who ends up benefiting from all of this? Who's benefiting? Who's benefiting from all of this? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. If you don't see... Uh, uh, are 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 Ukrainians dying so the USA can profit from gas? Guys, th th this is all a giant Game of Thrones operation. These people are playing with people's lives. They're playing with people's lives. 